And welcome back. I'm here with Laura Stastny. She is with Nebraska Wildlife Rehab, Executive Director. Laura, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. You have been, I just, first of all, I love Nebraska um, Wildlife Rehab. Thank you. Um, you've helped me over the years, and we may chat about that. I'll tell a few of those stories in a little bit, but just let, tell me, tell our viewers, what is Nebraska Wildlife Rehab? Sure. Nebraska Wildlife Rehab is a Nebraska-based organization with a twofold mission. We're here to rescue, rehabilitate, and return to the wild native wildlife. And we're also here to educate the public about native wildlife, how to live in harmony with it, and really to help people understand how unique and amazing the ecosystems right here in Nebraska are. Yeah, so you have, um, there's some things that have happened this year that are new. So talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so one of the things that's happening year over year now, it's kind of not new anymore, is that we continue to have record years. Mm -hmm. So this year we will end the year having rescued more than 6,000 wild animals. Um, for the second time in the last three years, we've gone over the 6,000 mark. And I feel like that's going to be our new norm. Um, mm -hmm. The more that people know about us, and also the more that people understand that wildlife is worth saving, Yes. Um, the more they're going to bring them to us. We're also the wildlife partner for the Nebraska Humane Society, so we get a lot of wildlife from them every year. So um, year over year, and in the last 20 years since we started, we're just growing so fast year over year. Um, another thing that happened this year is that we got a second site for rehab. So we've uh, leased another site, and on that site we now have added 30 outdoor cages for wildlife. Right. Um, we also have three indoor spaces for rehabilitation because we had outgrown our center in Louisville and needed more space. Um, that new site has also allowed us to add a second tier advanced internship for university students. So for students wanting to come in and get advanced medical knowledge and advanced husbandry knowledge about wildlife, we were able to add that this year. So that was really exciting. So my question to, when you say rescue wildlife, I just want you to kind of get more um, specific about what does that mean when you rescue wildlife? Why would people bring you? Why would people call you? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are there for animals that are orphaned, that are injured or are ill for some reason. Uh, we take those animals and we rehabilitate them. So we provide appropriate medical care. Uh, perhaps it's bottle feeding baby mammals or hand feeding baby mm -hmm. birds that no longer have parents. And then getting them ready to return to the wild. Our goal for all of our wildlife is a life back in the wild where they belong. So is there any instance, um, because again, I've called you a couple of times for finding a squirrel, a little baby squirrel running around the street that obviously got kicked out of the nest or, or fell out of the nest. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up taking the squirrel to one of your kind of foster homes. You um, also, I had birds in my dryer. Right, um, I a remember bird, that. A <laughs> in my dryer. So, I mean, from what instance to what? I mean, is there anything that you just won't? Yeah, so sometimes we won't take animals because it's more of an education issue. Okay. And not a time when the animal really needs our help. Okay. So a for example would be um, a lot of times people will have raccoons with babies in their chimneys. That's not a time to take those babies away from their mother. Okay. It is a time to help people encourage the mother to take her own babies and move somewhere else so that they're no longer living inside a, a person's house. And so that's where our education kicks in. Not only are we out in the schools doing education or do we have our internship program, but we're also educating people every day on the phone, on social media, um, about how to live in harmony with wildlife. And if you have what you would call a nuisance issue, we call those a, just a conflict, but a lot of people call them nuisance issues. If you have that, there is a way to resolve that humanely without trapping and relocating, without hurting the animal, yeah. and to make sure that mothers stay with their babies. And that's all part of our education mission. Um, and we do that every day, 365 days a year. Yeah. Um, so how can people, so wanting to educate themselves on animals, go to your website, obviously. Absolutely, our website is nebraskawildliferehab.org. And on that site, we have extensive information about when is a baby animal orphaned? When does it need help and when should it be left alone? Um, what to do if you have a nuisance issue or if you have questions about the wildlife that you see in your yard. We have all of that kind of outlined on our website and then people can get to us through email, Facebook, telephone, Instagram, kind of everywhere. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I know your Facebook site is great as well because you have lots of information that's pushed out through there. 
Um, I even saw, I want to touch on the, the, is it the chipmunk? No, the um, groundhog. The groundhog. Oh, the um, prairie dogs. The prairie dogs, yes, yeah, yeah, the prairie absolutely. dogs. Absolutely. Um, you did a really great, uh, kind of a little documentary about how you were relocating them. Mm -hmm. So normally, um, what we always want people to understand is that a last resort for wildlife is to relocate it. Yeah. Normally, we do not relocate wildlife. We had a very unique situation happen this spring, um, and that was that a a native prairie with a large prairie dog colony, over 300 prairie dogs, was sold into agriculture uh, south of York. And mm. the person who bought it plowed it up and put it into soy, that's why they had bought it, and put the entire colony in danger. Prairie dogs are one of these animals that don't have any protections in Nebraska. Um, there are a lot of perceived conflicts with prairie dogs in farmers and ranchers. But the reality about prairie dogs is that they're a keystone species. They are emblematic of the Great Plains and the prairies. And as a keystone species, they not only support themselves within their colonies, but also a myriad of other animals, lots of reptiles and amphibians, insects, um, the black-footed ferret, the endangered black-footed mm -hmm. ferret, badgers, everything else. And so what we went in and did, because we had no choice, the prairie dogs couldn't stay there, is that we partnered with a few other organizations and Nebraska Wildlife Rehab went in and re ran the entire trapping operation. Mm -hmm. So we were able to trap, um, in just a few weeks, we were able to trap 233 prairie dogs of all ages, and we moved them to a new prairie site up in north central Nebraska near the Niobrara River. Yeah. Um, and we're continuing to monitor that colony. That. Um, not only, we were already aware of the plight of the prairie dogs in Nebraska. Um, we're a small organization, we're very busy, so we educate people about prairie dogs, but we hadn't really gotten involved um, yeah. so much. But that has jump-started a collaboration that we're going to be working on over the winter, and that is to make Nebraska a better place for prairie dogs and give us more options and give landowners more options for having prairie dog colonies if they want them. So that's one of the things that we're launching in 2019 right. is a real advocacy program yeah. for prairie dogs in Nebraska. Yeah, that just really, I mean, that really, it just impacted me, that that, that whole that little documentary that you did. Yeah, um, and, and it's on Facebook, so people yeah, can go and see and it. And the yeah. important work. So before we end, so we're getting into, we're getting into the winter seasons. What, what are things that you're gonna be on the lookout for, or what do you get calls for this time of year? Yeah, absolutely. So in the winter, we always call it slow season. And you know, back when I first started, that might have meant a few dozen animals at a time. Slow season for us now, we maintain about 200 animals at all time. In the summer, sometimes it's a thousand animals at once. Um, but so right now, it's bat season. So because we've had a hard freeze and there aren't very many insects, we're gonna start getting bats um, that will mm -hmm. hibernate over the winter. So we'll get over about 400 over the winter. It's also migratory bird season. Nebraska's on the central flyway for migratory birds. And so we're starting to get, we've got pelicans in, um, Sora, which are wading birds. Um, we've got gulls in, lots of different birds that migrate through our area that have been injured on migration. So okay. we're handling those guys. Yeah. The other thing that we're doing right now is that next year is our 20th anniversary. Yeah. So we're super excited about that. It's also the 10th anniversary of our partnership with the Jocelyn Art Museum for bat release. For the bat release, yes. Yep. And so next year we have a ton of public outreach planned. We're gonna do something monthly. We're gonna have Wildlife Wednesdays monthly that brings wildlife speakers to our community for free. People can just okay. come and learn about different wildlife topics. We're going to have an additional speaker series, yeah. um, and uh, we're also going to have a couple of wildlife trivia nights. So we're going to get try to get people out and really engage on the issues about wildlife in Nebraska, and and we just want people to celebrate with us. We couldn't yeah. do our work without our community, and so we just want to get out there and, and really be in the community in 2019. All right, I'm so excited about that. So um, we'll be in close contact, wonderful, and pushing out information for you. So one last time. Um, website is nebraskawildliferehab.org. Okay. And I also want to mention they do have a great profile in our annual giving guide, so you can go to spiritofomaha.com and check that out. Um, Laura, thank you so much. Thank Just you, really Andy. excited about the next year and everything that's going on. So are we. Thank yeah. you so much All for right. the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.